Members of the organizing committee of the conference, fellow representatives of civil society, I would like to say that it has been a real privilege to participate in this civil society forum for UNCTAD 15. We all know too well the backdrop under which this conference was executed and the hopeful expectations for honest, meaningful change reflected in the faces of the ordinary citizens from which none of us is spared working in this sector. Over the last few days, speakers talked about inequalities among and within countries as it pertains to vaccine access, limitations of autonomy and capacity for action, gender justice as being intrinsic in trade and economic policies, the need for a re-energized UNCTAD, working in complementarity with the development agenda of LDCs and SIDS, the need for government intervention to address development shortfalls, need for a return to multilateralism, development finance for development, etc. We have further heard that for development to have impact, we must prioritize the interest of people over the interest of global capital interests. We have had the fetters of neoliberal myths debunked and the recognized need for trade for development. Buzzwords from the conference were democratization, resilience, digitalization, multilateralism, vulnerability, fiscal space. These issues call for a recognized reaffirmation of the original mandate of UNCTAD, but perhaps a digitalization of the social movement in a digital age to demand change. I want to thank everyone who has made this conference a success. A special thank you to the government and people of Barbados, the UNCTAD 15 Office of the Local Coordinator located in Barbados, with specific mention to Theresa Marshall and Dr. Chantal Munro-Knight. We thank you for your role in coordinating the Civil Society Forum, especially in an environment that has had its difficult moments. The Technical Studio team, we thank you so much for your streaming services, the moderators and speakers of the plenary sessions, and CSOs who are coordinating side events in the next session. Members of the International Civil Society Facilitating Group, we thank you as well, the Civil Society Community Participants, the Outed Secretariat in Geneva. We want to encourage everyone that even as we close out to stay tuned and participate in the upcoming breakout sessions and of course the working groups that are to follow. So from my end, have a wonderful post session from the digital shows of Barbados in the Caribbean. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Ms. Kuzel Peters. Um, we come here to a close already of the 2021 uh, UNCTAD Civil Society Forum. These three days have passed by so quickly. UNCTAD considers civil society a strong partner and contributor to the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Together with governments, businesses and communities, we all ought to set up a new path forward towards an inclusive post-COVID-19 world where transformative development efforts reach everyone, especially those from the most marginalized parts of the world and ensure everyone feels empowered with better life opportunities. The UNCTAD 15 Civil Society Forum featured three plenary sessions and four side events to provide greater insights into key areas of thematic interest, such as reaffirmation of UNCTAD's mandate in the current socioeconomic context, as well as its ability to confront challenges facing the global South. Also trade and development with a special focus on uh, framing trade agreements, international cooperation and building local economic resilience through technological justice. Thirdly, the need for systemic reforms to ensure adequate fiscal space for countries in the global South to pursue development pathways. Topics ranged from human rights approach to debt relief, debt sustainability and the importance of South South finance as well as investment cooperation. A few decades ago, going digital was a privilege that only some people had. In the current scenario, with where the rapid pace of digitalization is transforming the way we live, work, and connect with each other, 
going digital has become a necessity to access better life opportunities in the new era ahead. However, digital technologies have still not set foot in some parts of the world that is in dire need of it. UNTED will continue to work closely with civil society partners to support the development of domestic digital infrastructure development and data capabilities in the developing countries to raise and participate in the emerging digital economy on equal terms. As countries pile on more debt to deal with the economic fallout from the public health crisis, the question is how to service such debt without the much needed relief to create the fiscal space necessary to achieve the sustainable development goals. Now is also the time to address the shortcomings of globalization with targeted trade policies, technology and investment agreements, and even out the imbalances in the global economy and ensure the developing world is able to reap the benefits of a new system that is inclusive and more resilient. And as I said in the beginning, this requires all stakeholders to work together. On behalf of UNCTAD, I want to thank you all for the interesting panel discussions that we followed closely and for your participation in these three days of Civil Society Forum. I wish to thank in particular the government of Barbados, who has done a tremendous uh, work to putting this all together, and especially thank Dr. Chantal Monroe and the Caribbean Policy Development Center, uh, the host country civil society organization, its chair, Ms. Kozel Peters, and Mr. Richard Jones and his team to having been guiding civil society and having set up um, a wonderful program that we've been able to witness. We wish you success in the finalization of your declaration. Still, the work has not finished and look forward to your presence at the conference that will take place in the week of 4 October. So we hope to see you soon again. Goodbye. Colleagues, I can't believe that we are here at the closing ceremony of the Civil Society Forum, and it seems that we've just only started. But like Kozel said, the discussion still goes on. Don't forget, after this closing, please stay tuned to the side events that are going to allow us to be able to continue the intense and very substantive discussions and dialogues that we've had over these two days already. But I also want to say and admit, as I did in my very brief welcome at the beginning, that it has been a challenging road for us to get here, perhaps a little bit more challenging than it should have been. I think that there are a number of lessons for all of us to learn about how to engage a mature, fully engaged and capacitated civil society who wants a direct seat at the table. There are many lessons that I'm hoping that we take from this process as we go in to the next UNCTAD conference, UNCTAD 16. But I also want to acknowledge that we have been in a challenging environment. We have been forced to engage with the COVID-19 on a virtual platform. And that may have stemmed some of the passionate networking and engaging that we are accustomed to. But I want to thank all of you, every one of you that would have participated, all of the panelists and the moderators, for the way that you have engaged despite the challenges to ensure that we had a substantive two days of discussions that will continue, as I indicated before, right after um, into the side events. I want to especially thank the International Civil Society Facilitation Group. And I know, colleagues, that the process has been imperfect. You've had less time than you would have wanted to. Um, to engage and to put things together and perhaps even the level of political participation has not been what you would have wanted. But the fact that we've been able to have these two days and been able to walk away with the substance that we've had suggests that you have worked well and what you have put together for us within these days has been right on point. Yeah? I believe that all of us can say that the thoughts and deliberations and discussions that we've had here over these two days and what the panelists have put forward. And again, I refer to not only in terms of the discussion, but the actual practical recommendations that have emanated that we are looking forward to see in the Civil Society Declaration, but also in the outcome document for this conference, our testimony, again, to the fact that as civil society, we always rise to the occasion. I also want to thank the Caribbean Policy Development Center. And again, to say to CPDC, thank you so very much. Again, we know that you would have worked in less time than you would have wanted to with less resources. But again, as a 
Small Island Development State Civil Society Organization from the South. You have shown your mettle and your resilience. And under the leadership of Ms. Gozal Fraser um, as chair and also Mr. Richard Jones, you have put together a team that has worked well and worked hard over these couple of days. And we say absolutely thank you so very much for staying the course despite the challenges. I hope that you'll also permit me um, to also highlight the work of Ms. Geneva Oliver, who was a volunteer with us, volunteer completely in every sense, but who worked tremendously as an alumni of the Masters in International Trade Policy Program. Thank you so very much for that program um, for working with us as well. I also want to thank, as Arlette did, Arlette, um, my counterpart in Geneva and her entire team. Um, and we know, Arlette, you had some sleepless nights <laughs> with us. But we thank you so very much for working together, for working with us, for being flexible, for being adaptable in this process. But most importantly, um, I want to give a big thanks to the National Secretariat, um, led by Mr. Theresa Marshall and her team. I want to thank them for their political support, for their technical support, and for the other substantive support that they have given to the Civil Society Forum. I want to recognize that in some territories, the relationships perhaps between government and civil society is one fraught with tension. But I have to be fruitful and say that within this Civil Society Forum, that we have got 110% support from the National Secretariat in every step of the way. And we could not have been here and done what we have done over these two days without that support. And I say thank you so very much. I want to end by echoing some of the sentiments that have come from these two days from civil society because even though we have had good dialogue that has been substantive, that means nothing if we don't see a fundamental shift, if we don't see that being reflected in the outcome that comes from this conference. If we don't see that there's a recognition by our governments that the state that we are in is urgent, if we don't see a recognition that unless we have a fundamental shift, we talked about a systemic shift in the way that we dialogue, in the way that we engage, in the spaces in which we engage, then it means that as governments, as people, we have not yet moved to shift the, the lever and ensure that this Octad 15 is indeed a game changer. And a game changer is what we need. So as Arlette said, the work is not done. Um, we have a group of civil society colleagues that will be working on the political declaration. And from here as well, the civil society journey does not end. Civil society will participate um, in the substantive um, conference that begins on October 3rd. So thank you so very much to all of you. And again, we look forward to continuing this journey. Bye-bye from Barbados. Another one of the critical issues that we're going to be discussing here within the Civil Society Forum is the issue of climate justice and sustainability. If you are small island developing states, then you know that the issues of climate change are especially acute. When we also talk about our blue and green economy, then we know how relevant this discussion is. So we want to ensure that we have a framework which not only speaks to the issues of climate change, but understands the interconnectivity between climate change and human rights, which ensures that there's an equitable framework for reducing the impact of climate change. Welcome delegates. I am Ramona Smart, the president of Soroptimus International of Barbados. Soroptimus International is a global organization which for the past 100 years has been enabling, empowering and educating women and girls all over the world. Here in Barbados, the elderly are important to us. We value the contributions they have made to the development of our nation. With this in mind, Soroptimus International of Barbados established the Soroptimus Senior Citizens Village some 50 years ago. At this village, our seniors reside in peaceful, tranquil, and safe surroundings. Also within the compound, we have an activity center where our seniors gather to socialize and engage in activities which encourage active 
aging. From this conference, we are looking forward to some strong outcomes. Outcomes which will help Barbados to maintain the social gains it has made so far among the elderly. We welcome and do enjoy your conference. We here in Barbados are extremely proud to be not only the first Caribbean island, but also small island developing state to be hosting UNTAD. For this reason, I, Amanda Amtage, representing the Bajan Firefighters Charity, would like to extend the heartiest Bajan welcome. Additionally, we hope that these discussions will aid in reforming developmental policies, which will seek to foster resilience and equality for developing and developed states alike, especially amidst COVID-19. Welcome to Barbados. My name is Trevin Manning and I'm a member of the Barbados Association of Non-Governmental Organizations. This is the 15th United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, Civil Society Forum. And we hope that throughout these days, you will continue to send strong yet inclusive message. We are depending on you for strong outcomes. As a small island developing state, climate change is beyond an important issue. We not only see the reality, but live the reality every day. We hope that you, throughout these days, will continue to send a strong message about the need for responsive climate action and inclusive trade policies. Barbados is beautiful, but as a country, we suffer from unfair, high and crippling debt. The time to act is now. The times are unprecedented. We need serious action. Welcome to Barbados once again. We wish you were here with us. Welcome delegates, I'm Christopher Jokes, Director of the Barbados Council for the Disabled. The Council is partnering with all sectors of society on a journey from inequality and vulnerability to a prosperity for all. Barbados is beautiful, but as a country, we suffer from unfair trade rules and high debt. Civil society is an important voice to provide alternative development paths and hold governments accountable. Therefore, we are counting on you, my friends, to help us send strong messages about the change we need.